three, two, one. And welcome to What the Shuck. The goal of the What the Shuck podcast is to provide a platform for those people with positive and influential ideas that have helped me to change my life or that might help you to change your life. As we navigate through these tribulations that life will throw you, it's going to be pretty tough. So these people will probably help you out. However, along this way, I also plan to put a spotlight on the people who make Kentucky such a unique and awesome place. So throughout my podcast, I'll be interviewing people of all professions, arts, and just anyone with a cool idea that should be heard. My next guest is a former All-American athlete turned drinker turned musician and is the lead singer of Denim James. He is arguably the most famous person from Bath County and is definitely one of the most important football players to date, donning the important number 18 my next guest is Clark Kissick. What's up, dog? Thanks for coming uh, on, man. It's good to be here, man. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, dude. So Clark and I met in college at Moorhead at the Circle. So if anybody knows what the Circle is, that pretty much tells you that we were in a very drunken state. And um, <laughs> there was plenty of women around and music. And uh, for people that don't know, Moorhead has a pretty cool scene for like as far as like the community is pretty close. At least it was when we were in, when I was in school and when you were at UK, and that, I feel like that led to a lot of really cool relationships from county to county. And that's honestly one of the reasons why it's been so cool for me and it's given me the potential to have a podcast is because I've got to meet so many cool people. And being from Kentucky, music is a huge influence. So mm -hmm. that's something that you do. That's something you've done for a really long time. You're a very talented musician, and it's just been super cool to watch all these people from that area who've mm -hmm. gone to do music. So I wanted to bring you on because of that. Then also, like I was saying, we, we we can talk sports, we can talk drinking, we can talk music, so. <laughs> the whole shebang. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. Like, I mean, like you talk about how we've met at Moorhead, but I was, you know, the day was like how, uh, like at one time, at some point, there was JT Cure, uh, Chris Stapleton, and uh, Je Jesse Wells, like Professor Jesse Wells, like all living in Moorhead at the same time. Like, it just kind of sums it, like, I never went, and like I have to like make that clear to people. I never went to Moorhead, and I went to UK, and I mean, <laughs> I hung around Moorhead more than probably any guy ever, but that didn't go there. But like, it was just, I, it's just a different place, and I think it, it only it's the only type of place that could like you could just find like people like that, and just I don't know, it's just always been perfect. Well, dude, for me, an inspiration for me of doing this is that I. Went to the Sturgill Simpson and Tyler Childers concert. Did you go to it? Oh, yeah. It's fucking incredible. It's awesome. Literally, I say that Sturgill Simpson had, like, the best show I've ever fucking seen in my life. Some people didn't like them because they just don't like that style of music. Yeah, I was going to say, if that's, I love your, that shit. if that's not your thing, then, like, I mean, I guess I can see it, but... If you I, like rock music and yeah. getting the fuck down, then like you... He's melting your face. Like, yes. Else you want him, yeah. But the goal for me is just that maybe one of you guys that come on my podcast end up being that person and just by just it's important to put your all's content out there and your all's music because every every ear that might hear it might be the ear that like helps you all to do something right. and I know that what's so cool though about the music scene from and it's why the people are so successful mm -hmm. is because the people aren't doing it because they want to be successful they do it because they really genuinely enjoy music and they enjoy like providing an art and being like artistic and providing thought and it's just super cool because there's not a lot of stuff to do where we're from <laughs> so it's like you got you have to literally find your medium or your like art that you're going to provide or like something that's going to like give you like some sort of hobby to have because if you don't you're going to go crazy and you're going to be doing meth or some shit like. <laughs> right yeah like i like we we started playing as a band back in may a uh, may day of last year at, like when i say i mean we played before together but like got back together and uh it's been like the first winter that I've ever noticed that I like felt like I had something to do and I didn't just lay around and I mean we were still going to each other's houses and like playing music and stuff but like that's different uh, selling out Frankie's like the plaza uh, baby. like with that like we don't have like we don't have any we don't have like an album out yet like we I mean I've got I'm working on all that stuff but that's just hard like it's it's a lot more work than I really thought it was going to be I'll do for sure yeah and but they, uh, and I, cause I don't, I mean, I'm not going to put something out. Well, we're not, especially like, unless we think it's good and like that we like it. Cause I mean, we don't want to embarrass ourselves in front as much as the next guy, but like we, people, 
people, I mean, there's nothing really else to do, I guess. So people like still come and listen to live music and stuff like that. And like every now and then, I, it does kind of feel cool. But like the one thing that you're doing around home, like everybody else likes it. So everybody else comes around and everybody else listens to it. And I mean, it's working out so far. It's not really, we not really had a plan of action, I guess. But <laughs> I mean, I feel like a lot of the times when people will, or doing something along the lines of what we're doing. And I'm not saying I'm an artist by any means of what you all are doing. Like you're actually providing music. But um, for me, I've just found that just having people support it is really just encouraging enough to like keep you to keep doing it and keep getting better and to keep doing it. And it does help. One of the main reasons why I think that this podcast can be so successful and why I really think I can help people to get so like up with their whatever they're working on is because the listening base of Kentucky and the people in the area are so loyal and they're mm-hmm. so cool. And I just feel like where we come from, there's, like we said, there's not a lot going on. So if you have something to support, think right. about Friday night football. Like everybody in the town's going to be there. Even if you, even if you suck, <laughs> even if you suck ass, they're going to be there. You're like hell nine. yeah, go Bobcats or go fucking go Cougars. And You're it's just like Bath County getting. Getting murdered and people are still coming for Fucking no reason. Getting hammered before <laughs> pregame and they're out cooking ribs in the parking lot and shit. And it's just like, man, we suck. We're gonna win like two games this year. And these people are getting all hyped up, and it's just like it's encouraging because then you're like, all right, I should, I can keep practicing and I can keep working on this because no matter what, I'm still getting right. it, it's it, it's being acknowledged that I'm putting in this effort. So it's just encouraging. Obviously, you have to put in work behind the doors that we don't see and it's stuff like what you're talking about was working on an album or for me it's like trying to get my shit on my, my website or like get it on iTunes and stuff like that and it's just everybody has their own little like struggle they go through when they're working on something that they really care about and it's just really important to honestly just keep working on it right and for you like I said you've been how long have you been playing music I know the whole time I've known you've been playing but I'm sure it's been it's much been longer long, than since I was 17 or 18 yeah I, mean, I didn't start playing I didn't start playing what I would consider actual uh, good music probably until a couple years ago because I was beating around for a long time trying to, I don't know, I just learned whatever songs, chords, and just yell it out to whatever girl, like... We whatever, do it for the whatever, chicks, let's whatever be real. Some girl, whatever song they told me like I was, was going to play, like, it... I was saying, I've... I've sang more Luke Bryan than I'd like to admit, but, you know, <laughs> it's... Uh, uh, Sadly, there are people who play Luke Bryan and aren't sad to admit it. Though. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean it's, I mean, like, I think it's good to have something like that, and like, because, I mean, there's nowhere else like uh, somebody like me or anybody else who's just kind of hanging out around Lexington is really going to walk onto a podcast unless you get like on with like KSR or something like yeah. that. But like, I mean, we <laughs> we kind of lucked out. Like, we played it over there at the bar one day, and they. Uh, They've mentioned us three or four times on the radio. So if anybody ever hears on KSR, they mentioned the uh, Moorhead Frat Band. The Moorhead Frat Band. We're, uh, we're form. Our, our real name is Denim James, <laughs> and it's not. Uh, and if anybody could tell Matt, it's not Moorhead Frat Band. I was. I didn't even go to Moorhead, and I was not in a fraternity. So, like, I. <laughs> he actually played football for UK. <laughs> Oh, the good, yeah, the back of the good. He was the legendary eighteen. The reason that the number eighteen is legendary is not because of, it's because of, uh, it's because Clark Kissick. My it's, my biggest uh, claim to fame is I can give you the lineage of, uh, I think like Freddie Maggard wore eighteen, and you got guys like uh, Jacob Tammy and Randall Cobb and Boone Williams and all those other guys. And somewhere right in the middle of there is like Randall Cobb. Nobody on offense wears it for like three or four years. And then I'm just hanging out over on the sidelines, like beer gut, you know, like still Real Randall, Alex Moran, like still Randall Cobb's jersey. They just had took the back off and like put in ki- like Kissick on it. <laughs> so like I, it, was, it never fit me in the first place. And like, <laughs> like man, it was bad. It was shameful. Dude, you're a much larger guy than Randall Cobb. <laughs> oh, like yeah. just height and everything. He, he, I'll never forget the first day him coming to. Uh, he came down and like I guess the Packers were like off on the, uh, on their break or on a bye week, whatever. And uh, he, him and Morgan Newton are standing over on the side and like we're going through the quarterback drills. And I kind of look over and I was like, damn, that's Randall Cobb, man, that's cool. And he instantly like sees me wearing like eighteen, 
And he like looks at Morgan Newton and he's like, I can read his lips and he's like, who the fuck is that? <laughs> and, I, and like, and he, and his coach, one of the coaches walked by and he points at me again. He's like, who is this guy? And they're like, oh, it's, it's, it's Clark Kissick did all this stuff. Well, Coach Merrill like walks over and he's still talking about it. And Coach Merrill like, he's like, oh no, I got to introduce you to this guy. You know, I got, and like, so he comes over, he's like, hey, big dog, like, I'm going to introduce you to, to this man right here. You might know who he is, big dog, you know, big he's dog. Like, he's, I love it's big Randall dog, Cobb, and I'm just like, oh my god! And he like, I'll never forget him like shaking my hand, like it. He just like he just dapped me up, but like, it was so, it was so awkward. Like he was just like, man, y'all let this slob, <laughs> like, this white like, boy, <laughs> you let this country ass <laughs> white boy, country ass bad kind of gut, like hanging out of this jersey. I mean. And like three years before that, he's just dominate, like playing against Cam Newton and stuff like that, just dominating teams. And he's in the NFL, and I'm just hanging out over there. So like, my claim to fame was that I was I was destined one day to be Randall Cobb Jr. But but just, you're gonna do it on the on the <laughs> stage though. You know, you didn't do it on the field. You're gonna do it on the yeah. stage. You're. It's important to like to to be able to take that in and be like, yeah, you know. I, I didn't that, do it there, but I can do it somewhere else. I mean, that really is a thing. Like, people, we always get people like, they'll like, be like, you all not get nervous? Or like, is that not weird? And like, honestly, the only time I get nervous is like, getting on, but uh, like posting a video on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram or something like that. Because I'm like, that's going to hang out there for, Ever. people can go back and watch that a million times. If if some some tweets, there's probably some tweets I probably want to Oh, for sure. Like, <laughs> oh, man. Like, I think back, like, my Facebook sometimes, if I, that old memory thing will pop up. And it, it'll even be like, this morning was like a John Mayer lyric. And I was just like, man, that's so cringe. Like, even that I could get roasted dude, for. Yeah. <laughs> like, dude, not even the bad stuff. Dude, <laughs> I have pretty poor grammar now, and I see some shit from then, and I'm just like, oh, dear Lord. Like, yeah. if I'm even aware of how bad my grammar was then, like, holy shit. Like, yeah, I, it's just, I just would do the most embarrassing stuff. It just, it's crazy, like, what you... But I guess we're, like, the first... Our age is, like, the first generation of people that gets to just... We were MSN and people our, and ICQ right. and, and AOL and, and that shit was important <laughs> right. to, to dude. That was where we were spitting game at. I mean, that's how it was at least. We're like, like the first people that fully hit the that our almost our entire lives. We've had social media and like we're hitting at I least their adult lives, lives, but yeah, their whole adult lives we will have it right. And that's just so like if if you just go if we just keep going, our, our little brother and sister are me about so stupid much. as hell because of that yeah. The shit my sister cares about, I'm just like, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> I was like, I thought I was fucking stupid then, and I'm like, you're all, you all are even more stupid. Yeah, and like the the, I will say, like I went down a wormhole today. There was some guy that was on campus last night that dude, who is Del? Who the Del? Who is who that guy? I don't know. Who that I literally is. tweeted. I said, who the fuck? Last night I didn't see you. Tweet I said, that, who like, the fuck is Dude Doback or whatever that dude's like, name there is? Was I had girls like. Freaking out, and I looked yeah. at him. I was like, "I'm as I'm at least as good looking as that guy." I just, I, I just was like, I, I'm looking this. I up. looked. At, I couldn't. I just, I was like, I mean, I, I don't. I, what do I say? Like, what, what, where? What, am I missing something? <laughs> Did I do something wrong in life that this dude's better than me? What's he do? I, that's and, the thing too. Is I haven't even found out what he does yet. Yeah, is that's he what, a musician? Like, I was like, thinking he was like an actor or something. Like, I don't mean that as like. Like I think he, I'm so much better looking at him necessarily, but like I just I literally I, said who the I, fuck I, is not, David I, Dobrik he, at eleven hours ago? Like who like girls are running across <laughs> campus for this guy. Yes. That's the part I was like, all right, I'm really like out of touch with I mean I'm missing something here, because if everybody's this crazy But then I literally I guess, don't even know who he is though. But the, what was the guy that in uh who's <laughs> a wormhole? What was the guy then when we were? I was probably like my freshman year of college. That like girls would just see him like, cry, like he was definitely like getting like underage photos and like everybody just acted like that was like completely normal. It was Hunter. Uh, I think he got in trouble eventually, but like he was like always just getting like girls would just send him naked pictures like on his Twitter and he would like retweet him and stuff. Matt and Jones. Like, yeah, <laughs> but it was like, I just remember it was this guy like, and I think he finally get, got in trouble for it, but like. It, it would always just, 
I just knew, it was one of the things I never fully got, and that's when I finally I was like, maybe I don't fully actually get social media. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, I just don't really understand it. <laughs> just disclaimer. Matt Jones does not get new pics from <laughs> underage people. I was just saying that, just a joke. But, um, dude, no, seriously, under like social media for me was so weird growing up because like when we were young in like middle school and high school, like MySpace was the big thing, and like Facebook was just coming people out. People were mad about who was not in your top friends. Yeah, it's like, dude, yeah, yeah, dude, John didn't go get you that sandwich earlier. Remember, my, I'm Blake, and I did go get you that yeah. sandwich, so I should be number one of your top friends. It's like. <laughs> shit Blake now that you said that John didn't go give me that sandwich yeah. so you are number one and it's just like uh, we even had like Bebo and all that stuff did you ever have Bebo I don't think I had Bebo I like Bebo a lot better than MySpace I was disappointed when everybody switched to MySpace but then that's when like music and stuff was on there see that's why I really like I think honestly the music taste that I have today was heavily influenced by MySpace so yeah. I do at least give it a shout out for that I don't appreciate my pictures that I probably had on there I was probably like Squatting like yeah, down by like a tank or some shit with like a Warren <laughs> Sapp jersey on. And yeah. That wasn't an exact picture. I was wearing like a Michael Vick like uh, authentic jersey. That's or what I'm saying. Yeah, I just found, some stupid like, shit. Uh, the, uh, yeah, like I, I always liked Bebo and then we went to Face, like when everybody first got Facebook, I was like, man, this is going to be like the coolest thing ever. And within... I think I figured out within like two years. Was like the, once the old people got on there, was like this, this it's ruined. This is going. To it be, was awesome though at first. I, like it's it's quite possibly the most destructive thing <laughs> to all of society. Yeah. The whole reason that just people eviscerate small towns just it's really helpful. That it's what's so crazy about social media is it's such a double edged sword because it's like it, there's so many benefits. Like you can have a podcast or you can spread your music, but then it's right. also like. People were way more scared of the coronavirus than they probably should be. <laughs> and it's like, you realize like the last 14 years, there's been like the bird flu and the swine flu and the yeah. Ebola and measles. And they've all been supposed to kill us. Yeah, but like, like there's a there's a pedophile ring in the pizza, gate. The pizza parlor. Yeah, hey, I don't like, I, I'm not even counting that one out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's some crazy shit that happened there that yeah. I'm like, literally that ended up being the Jeffrey Epstein stuff. Then mm. everyone's like, you're fucking crazy, dude. And it's like, well, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, literally my roommate and I all the time talk about how we don't necessarily believe conspiracies but we're always like at least willing to There's hear like them a little out bit of truth in that yeah story. we gotta hear it out it's like it's a good story where did that come from like yeah. that's crazy no one just makes that much shit up <laughs> like some of that has to be no one literally just was like all this stuff is true it's like all them old crazy men like when you like anytime you talk to some like old man that comes out of the mountains like tries to do the old wise grandpa thing and like tells you I mean everybody's mad even like he like tells all them corny jokes and like cracks in little wise tales and stuff. But like all anytime they're like telling that stuff, I always I always like it and I like to listen. I like to try to put it in my music sometimes because I'm like, there's a little bit of truth in there somewhere. But like, it's I, I realize ninety percent of it's bullshit. And but that's the that's the best part. Like that's the art of it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like mean, you find a little bit of like good stuff out of it, dude. I mean, there's little golden bits that can be. There's a lesson to be learned from anybody you talk to. Yeah. Like literally anybody you talk to any day has some sort of information that you don't have. Mm -hmm. And rather it's bullshit and you yeah. learn that this is what I don't do. <laughs> or you learn that, all right, shit, that's a very applicable thing that I should do. All right. And it's just like you said, like, you know, you got to take everything with a grain of salt. I guess that's where that saying is from. It's just like, you yeah. Know. The best thing you can learn is that somebody has no, absolutely no idea what you're talking about. Because once you figure out that like certain people and I'm, I'm one of those people I'm free to admit it but like once you figure out somebody has no idea what they're talking about then you're like okay alright now I can get some bases out of here and I can just take it for a grain of salt <laughs> dude there's this um, roll on there's a song by Sunday Best that they used to have or they have and this dude calls in at the bit beginning yes. of it he's like my name's Bart and yeah. I like them I boys like, Sunday best. They like them boys Sunday best. They're real good. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm just like, that's the, dude, that's, that's some awesome intro shit though to a song oh, yeah. though. Yeah. That's fire shit. That's like perfect. in the rap community, that would be known as La Forma Blanca. <laughs> like Kenny Powers. But 
Dude, I want to kind of talk about a little bit about basketball right now. Uh, we are maybe going through some crazy shit with Ashton Haggins. What do you think is going on with that? Do you think it's a big deal? Do you think it's not a big deal? I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I always take it as a grain of salt, I guess, because well, when it comes to – when once things – How thing, are we so cohesive until that one moment? It, just, it sucks that it like, happened out in front of people, I guess, because that stuff happens like – people don't understand, especially like in football – this is part of sports. They're legit fight. Like people are fighting every single day and arguing about something the stupidest stuff. And like, and there's guys that don't like each other. There's all. And I, I mean, basketball, football is definitely way worse because there's so many. There's more like a hundred dudes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, in basketball, there's only like fifteen of you. But if people don't think that, like, on the last couple of basketball teams that they haven't, there's been certain guys that just didn't get along. Like it's clear. But like. <sighs> I feel. I mean, they all act like they like each other. I guess. And like, but that's also a part of like the thing that's going on with when you recruit the people that we do. Right. There's gonna be some egos. Right. I mean, yeah, you bringing in the guy. Like, if you bring in all the best players, the number one guy, I think they're gonna be the best player. Like, I just Khalil Whitley. I, obviously, he just like doesn't. Yeah, something's not. He doesn't like. I won't say he doesn't like it, but like, he. It feels uncomfortable that quickly, and Nick Richards, Nick Richards, who might have been one of the worst players that's played here for a long time, <laughs> is all of a sudden like, blossomed yeah, to like, like the like junior Nick Richards really did turn out to be like a really good player. Well, it was like with Will, Willie Cauley Stein. I feel like people right. forget like with him, like he did, he had an okay freshman year, and then he got hurt his sophomore year and didn't get to play in the tournament. But then his junior year, he came out and then balled out, and now he's yeah. still in the NBA. Like literally, like six years later, like. Yeah, and it's just, dude. Honestly, Nick Richards might could be even better than than Willie Cauley Stein just because he's a bigger body. He 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 doesn't provide the the same athleticism, mm-hmm. but like I think that he is a little bit more of a consistent scorer. Offensively, he's a better player. Exactly, and but he gets the boards to make. Willie up. defensively was like one of the best. That <laughs> yeah, he's like all American. Yeah, he really yeah. is. Like truly, <laughs> but like. I don't know. It's just been interesting to watch because when we lost to the Evansville, I was like, I'm not even worried about this game. I'm not worried about this team. I never really overcompensate for like a loss. I'm never like, dude, I'm worried. I don't start worrying until like what just happened the other night. Because I'm like, that. (laughs) And then when Calipari's tweeting shit like, at halftime, I thought we had a Final Four team. And then after that, I'm like, we might like lose the first weekend. Maybe that's a way to motivate the team. I've just never seen him do that, so that's why I was kind of like, "Yeah, it's weird." It was weird. It's uh, the, the it's the first time I've ever like seen something that I could be like, "Yeah, that's really, normally because like cows like so good." Just what did they? What was said? All, like, that, yeah, I don't. I mean, well, they acted like in a video or whatever. They just said he wasn't gonna go back in. I don't feel like that's like the. I mean, if you say you're not gonna go back in, whatever. I guess. That's frowned upon, but I don't feel like everybody keeps acting like it's the end of the world. Like if that happens, <coughs> if that happens at halftime, if he just makes that remark back to him, they probably don't even think about it and then go back out. I mean, I guess he did. He, he. Kind of, I think back now, he kind of like self destructed, like right in the middle of the court. Yeah, I mean, you can't <laughs> do that. Shit. on fire, like you can't do that for sure. <laughs> and it's like you got to gain your composure. You got to keep it. Whatever you got to do to make it happen, it's like you got to do it. But like. Yeah, especially with cameras on you, it's it's a super interesting. Yeah. So wow. I, yesterday, when I when I was on the way over here, uh, I passed my old uh, when I lived on State Street, the my old house or whatever. There, they've tore like they've tore all that. It's I mean it's about to be all UK, isn't it? Yeah, it's just like they tore that when I first moved in. That's when they first started on the uh, Virginia Shriners Hospital or whatever. One or the lived at one forty four state was we were just No, I know you did, but the street No, the I front of it where they put the Shriners yeah, or whatever that Virginia yeah. I don't know what it is. They started putting that in. <laughs> when we were living there at one point it was uh yeah, the four way stop. I always said every redneck with big tires and a big jacked up truck wanted to come up there and was gonna burn rubber every time he got there. It was his it was their favorite thing to do. <laughs> and then you had the train tracks at the end, that train run all night long. And then I lived off Waller. Oh so. man! You had, the, <laughs> you had the helicopters landed on the ho- on the hospital. You had the ambulances pulling in, and you had the construction that started at six a.m. on it con- on the Shriners Hospital. And not to mention the fact that people just would cut through our yards and stuff. Like I don't think I slept. I mean, I, I don't think I slept 
The whole time I live there. Yeah. <laughs> That's part of why I'm always so tired now. I just, <laughs> I just stay in a constant state of trying to catch up between like 20, well, that'd be 2014 and 2016. Yeah, dude, those were interesting <laughs> times in life for sure. Uh, I, I was, I had just moved to Lexington then, was living off Westwood Court, yeah. or on Westwood Court off Waller. Yeah, I remember that. And we just, I mean, we, uh, the year I moved in was uh, when we went 38 and 1. And so, like, I, I and then the year after that was like the U.S. Uh, Jamal Murray year. Yeah. So I mean, it was that one was all right, but like, I fun. honestly really liked watching that team though. Oh yeah, it was fun. Well, I mean, after thirty and one, it was just everything was let down. So you, mm-hmm. uh, but I just, I don't know. God, I, what a heartbreaking loss. That's the hardest the, loss. The only good part is I don't remember it because I just was so. I remember like with like two minutes left, they were. I just knew that things were going bad, and so I just blacked out. Just black. <laughs> and I like I remember halfway through it, this cop came and got me, and I won't say who it was, but this cop came and got me, and he's like, "Man, he's like, there's this guy back here on the side that thinks he's, uh, or he says he is with you, but uh, he's like over here on your air conditioner." And I was, he's pretty drunk, you know, whatever. So I come out there and like they would set up that barricade in front of our house and they came and talked to all of us before they like while we were hanging out there and so we kind of they they would kind of I don't know buddy up with us but they were like a lot more forgiving with us so I go to ask because they had to deal with you all <laughs> right we were actually <laughs> living there and uh, he I walk around the corner and it's one of my buddies and uh, you would know him and he's like just sobbing like over top of the air conditioner and like he he, he like had went around there to cry because like out you know, he <laughs> he's really drunk and I just remember sitting there I was like damn we lost <laughs> and I, he kind of like all hit me like making me sober up and I woke up that next morning and I just I remember I rolled over and the first thing I thought to my mind I was like man I cannot believe we lost that game and then I remembered that story with like, <laughs> uh, instantly and I started I started telling my girlfriend I was like uh I have to tell you what happened last night. And so it kind of made it a little bit better, I guess. But Stories like that definitely help a loss be a little bit better for sure. Yeah. But uh, who would you – all right, so I always like to ask someone like an interesting question about like a Mountain Rushmore, like a top five. So if you could have a top five of any UK players for basketball, who would it be? Oh, basketball. I, I mean, I played, I played football, so – It's I'll, tough for I'll, me to be like, who's your – Best football players. Well, I mean, I'd do, I'll, I'll do the football because it'd be, uh, I mean, I'd be on there for sure. <laughs> and then uh, it'd, be, it'd be Randall Cobb and then uh, Josh Allen for sure. And selfishly, I'd throw Bud Dupree on there just because he was the best player. It'd be Bud or Zedarius because, like, every day, I, Avery, maybe Avery Williamson probably give him some credit, but, like, Bud and Zedarius coming off those corners every day during practice. Oh, I mean, shit. You're, that's, that's you're better the dude than, that was getting I mean, smashed think about, by them. That's you? better than any NFL. Like, there is no NFL team that has better ends coming, like, besides the Steelers who have Bud and, and yeah, Bud. <laughs> I guess, yeah, that would be the only one. Like, <laughs> you had a pro bowler and a guy that's, like, borderline pro bowler. Yeah. <laughs> like, there should have been an all-pro or whatever. I'm but, a Steelers fan, so I'm biased, though. Uh, basketball, you got to put Rondo – just because I I loved Rondo so much. When so I Rondo playing. above Wall. Uh, I mean, I mean I'm not ranking them in order. I guess I just would be, but I, Wall would be on there, and Davis, and then uh, I never thought about that. I either put Rondo or Tayshon, and then Tayshon at the three. Yeah. Okay. Or you could even pull in. I guess. Two. Well. You want to do it as a Mount Rushmore or as a starting five? Starting five. Okay, we'll do starting five. Yeah, yeah. You got Davis. No, I take it back. Would Rondo be on your Mount Rushmore? Because that's hard to believe, too. No, he I just, I, just shit. I love him. Not yeah, yeah, I love Rondo. Great. I just always thought Rondo was I, – I, I was at the South Carolina game when Rondo hit that big three to, to win it. And like, yeah. I just always – I just – I could tell he was like – He was always just now, super mean. Well, like looking back now, he's one of those guys that like once – He's like an old head, I guess. Like, yeah, he's, he's like an old school NBA. He's player. an old guy that like he that was young, and then now that he's old, he like fits that role perfectly. And yeah. like everybody was like, "Oh, okay, it makes sense." He's just uh, he's just a guy that wants to teach everybody what to do all the time. But my brothers and I went to his camp and stuff, and they always loved him. But I mean, my 
favorite player of all time was Demarcus. Bo- I just love Boogie so much. I love Boogie too, dude. It's when he elbowed Jared Swapshire. I was just that was Swapshire. Awesome. Yeah, honestly, was, the dude from from yeah, Louisville. I just I loved it so much. And he did call uh, me. Uh, hello, Mr. President. This Demarcus Cousins. <laughs> <laughs> At the Haiti like, thing. Everything about that stuff is just so like, but they were, like that season was almost they were like, like actual people. Like you felt like you were. Of course, that like was prime. I was going into high school or whatever, yeah. freshman in high school. It's like that's just the perfect people and the perfect. Like, they were so cool and they. I, I don't know. I don't want to say like this. These guys aren't cool. I mean, they're. There was just a different swagger about yeah, when like Calabari John, first came in and the whole yeah. everybody coming in too was just like. John Wall, like you, like you could tell John Wall thought he was better than every person out there. Like, yeah, I don't feel like Ashton Higgins. I mean, I know that's a kind of a dumb, like very obviously Ashton Higgins is not John, John Wall. Wall, but John Wall literally he just had that <laughs> he literally did the John Wall dance. Dude. Just, I mean, he just knew just he's were, like, I'm like man, team, baby, it was like a team full of those guys. It was, just, it was super fun yeah. to watch, dude. But all right, so you got I I put Wall my point guard, and okay. then, I don't know. I mean, even my case, Jamal Murray's probably the best. Like, Him or Brook, Booker, in my opinion. She's like, Murray was better than Booker in college. Like Maybe, yeah. Uh, because he, he had more reign because we just had less good players. Yeah. No, I mean, but, and I can't, hold on, I'm sorry. I this did, is a tough question. When I, when I said my all-time favorite UK football players, <laughs> I left off, uh, and it's a sore subject, but, uh, I, I'm Tim just myself get, for leaving Jared Lorenzen off that. Uh, and uh, J Lo, I mean, R.I.P. Baby, he, a huge inspiration to me in my journey for dude, sure. I, I told that's the first time like I've never like celebrity law lo- like losses and things like that. Like, I don't. I mean, when presidents die and all that stuff, like I don't get all emotional about it. <clears throat> but when Jared Lorenzen died, I legit felt it's the first time. It I guess it kind of just coincided with I was like. 24, 25, I guess. I guess it was last year, so I was 25. But I just instantly felt like I was like, all right, my childhood is – it felt like my childhood was over. Like, yeah. I was like, if Jerry Lorenzen's dead, then, like, I'm not that little fat kid running around out in Bath County rock, totally like, trying to break people's hands with my left hand. You know? <laughs> like, just trying to be the baddest dude on the field. Dude, for me – it hurt really bad just because, like, I was such a huge UK football fan. But, dude, I wrote my, like, personal narrative in seventh grade, like, pretty much about when UK lost in seven overtimes to Arkansas. Yeah. So, it was just, like, I had such a connection that's always been my favorite sport. So, I totally get that. Football, for me, Jerry Lorenzen is one of them. You also left off Tim Couch. Which I mean, team. obviously. But, I mean, that's just, like, <laughs> I, I, Tim Couch is a bit easy one. But, I like, I, 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 when I, I'm glad I got I did get to meet him like right before I mean when I was playing I guess and I, he talked I've got a thing saved on the radio of him talking with K, uh, KSR one day uh, during the summer when Matt was gone or whatever that he would host mm-hmm. and uh, somebody had wrote in and been like uh, hey there's a new Jared Lorenzen coming to UK <laughs> the, the Clark Kissick's his name <laughs> And Ryan like read it off, and he was like, "Well, hell yeah!" He's like, "Can't wait to meet him." And then when I got, he's like, "Well, they said uh, he's like somebody told me you could like uh, I don't remember how he said it, like throw a ball through a barn or something." <laughs> I was like, "Yeah," I was like, "I never had the heart, I never had that problem, you know, of hitting the broadside." But he, I just, which I mean, that was I learned everything that I did in my the way I played was literally Jared. Like, I dude, because even though he was big, it was just like he was electric. Well, I went. It was weird. So I, I was in this, uh, if you at this combine deal, it was one of those things in high school. Like you, if the region you did good, then you would go to like a. There was like six satellites, and then they would bring everybody in for like the elite eleven and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Or yeah, and but I remember there was a bunch of guys from Tennessee. We were down in Nashville, and uh, it was me and like Reese Phillips and a couple other guys. And uh, Reese Phillips, Max, I remember that name. Yeah, Max Staber that was going to Florida and some of those guys. And he, uh, these DBs, when I was working out, they were like, where are you from? And I, I said Kentucky and like, you know, my most bad county accent ever. And, <laughs> and he said he, uh, <laughs> He's like, uh, this guy's like, man, he's like, I, he's, Kentucky just raises them different. They turned out they were all DBs from, or like linebackers from Tennessee. Yeah. They played at UT. 
And uh, they're like, y'all, you remind, that this, check it out, like, this guy is the next Jared Lorenz. And he's like, uh-huh. this motherfucker. And I was like, standing over in the, sh- of course, the shirt they gave me was like, they only had mediums for the quarterback. <laughs> and like, and it's just, I was just somewhere, I'm like, God, I mean, they might, we're bigger than, like, it's possible for a big guy to be a quarterback. Like, I'm out here trying to, I'm trying to do my best. I'm trying to show that yeah. these big guys can be athletes, too. But, but they were talking, they were like, man, there's like, we had one time, we had seven guys holding on to him, and they're like, he was starting to break free from us, and he tripped and fell. Like, somebody grabbed his foot or something, one of those guys was telling me. He's like, we realized, we are like, that man is, like, a superhuman. Like, he's a, like, he's as strong as an ox, and he's, like, got the feet of a guy that weighs 150 pounds. He's just, I don't know, it just... He was always my and like when they were telling me this, you could I'm sure they could see my face like man, this is just so cool. That you're yeah, all, dude, like, you're being like I'm, a, I'm so badass compared to like when you're idols. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I think I disappointed them by the end of it. I was, <laughs> I was not quite. I was three inches shorter and a hundred pounds lighter at that point. So, but I was left handed and I was rolling around like a tank. So, man, and so, yeah. he really was so fun to watch. Like I said, that. That. The behind the back pass and all that stuff, like over the head pass and all that, and like I don't know, just uh, I was at <laughs> I was at the Florida or uh, at the uh, at the Bluegrass Miracle at the against uh, LSU. LSU. Oh my God, I hate yeah. that game. I mean, it makes like <sighs> I was sitting with my aunt Rochelle, and I never forget like one of the like, worst losses ever. Oh man, I was probably like, ten the, years old. Or whatever. The thirty-eight and one loss. Yeah. And I would sit with my aunt, and she at the end of it, she's like, "How?" She's like, I, I, "The play, the play clock, you know, expired." She kept saying it over and over, and she didn't really like paying attention to football. And she just kept saying it again. She's like, "The play clock expired. Like it doesn't count." I'm, and finally, like just me, I just like freaked out. I was <laughs> like, "It doesn't matter. Like, please stop saying that." Like we fucking lost. Like, we lost. Like it's we just lost on an eighty yard bomb. You said it on the ten ten year old version of we fucking lost. Yes, like. Please leave me. Like, please stop talking. <laughs> I get, I get it. We lost. <laughs> well, dude, finish up on this, um, and we'll tell everybody where we can find you at on social media and stuff like that, and also what your goal is for the year as far as but. Uh, Twitter on Twitter, uh, or <laughs> which I don't. Tw- I don't really do much on Twitter anymore. But like Instagram, Clark Kissick, and Denim James Band. Follow us on that, and on uh, Facebook, we're Denim James Band. And uh, if you like good uh, old country and a little bit of rock and roll every now and then, a little bit of blues and who all's in your band, by the way? Uh, I know it's oh, Travis what, and Travis Walters, Gus. Uh, no, uh, or not Mark Gus, Dameron. but uh, yeah, Mark. Yeah. Yeah. Mark Denham Dameron from he's from Moorhead, and then J- uh, Griffin Bradley. And like the James Denham James is Mark is Mark Denham Dameron. He's just always Mark's been a cowboy since he was like five years old, and uh, then. <laughs> and like me and me and Travis and Griffin all grew up together and but like everybody in Bath County's first name is James. Like I'm James Clark Kissing, James Travis Walters, James Griffin Bradley. We had like five <laughs> other Jameses in our I, I, we just they, nobody can think nobody is a real Bible in Bath County. Yeah. <laughs> Joshua's David. We just like open the book James. up. We're like, all right, yeah. If you're James and Mark. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh but if you can find us on on there and then on YouTube, we've got Denim James Band. We I don't think I think we've got like one song up from like back some last summer when we were playing around. Uh, we're getting some videos together for that, and uh, I'm working with a couple of cool people that from uh, honestly I never thought I would uh, <laughs> never thought that I would be working with. So uh, I got some music coming out. I'll, I'll for sure have it on like SoundCloud and Spotify. All that good stuff. I don't, I'm not really in the iTunes world. I don't know how to do that. So we're trying to out. figure it out, both of us. Yeah, I'll have it on YouTube, and I'll just everybody get on Facebook and follow the Dental James Band at least, or mine, and we'll get it to you. Also, you got to finish up your top five, bro. You're starting five. You got to finish it. You're done too. I'd figure out a way to make Anthony Davis and Demarcus Cousins work down low. So that's yeah. my four, my five, and then give me John Wall the point, and give me. Uh, Tayshawn at the three, and 
I'm gonna go Jamal Murray the two. Jamal Murray the two. Uh, that, that's, that team doesn't play a whole lot of defense. But <laughs> we got two good rim protectors and like John Wall can wreak some havoc up front. So for sure, dude. And dude, what's your big goal that you want to finish off for the year? As far as like for whether it's like going to professional get, music, whatever. I've got to get this album out. I've got to stop <laughs> fiddling around. I just I gotta finally like. Except that it's not going to be perfect. Like, do you all have songs like that are recorded? Yeah, yet? we've got. Just, I've got. To, I've been working on some of it, um, and we're going to have some videos with some of them and stuff. Like, I mean, I don't know if I could say like what kind of music it is because it's not really like some of it just sounds like probably some an old country song like you'd hear some. Some of it's pretty rocky. Some of it is bluesy, and some of it's just straight bluegrass, and some of it's just like. I like just cracking joke. I, I just I don't really take things serious and like my favorite type of music is like satirical. Tongue, like tongue and cheek stuff. Yeah. So like like John Prine. Some kinda. John Prine, a lot of Hayes Carl, like things Dude, like yeah, that. Hayes Carl. And Isn't he gonna be at Railbird? Yeah, I saw that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. All, like Railbird this year, I mean I know they don't they got Jason Isbell and some of those, like I didn't really know some of those bands, but like the the people that I really like, like Paul Call like Paul Colton's where it's at right now. I, I don't think I actually... Oh, Wait, is that the dude that uh, does cocaine, cocaine country, country cowboy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. man. I, that dude I is saw cool. him live Isn't he playing... It? Okay, He's so he did play at the Burl. Yeah. He played the Burl With not too long Leah ago. With Leah Blevins. Yeah. And yeah. I just... I came back. My cousin, uh, his Damn, wife... I didn't know they already had that. Yeah, his wife knows Leah Blevins pretty good. Uh, or they went to college together. And I, <laughs> they asked me how, how it was. And I was like, I just want to... I want to be Paul Coffin. <laughs> like, I just want to... I feel like it would be fun to watch After live. watching that, I was like, I just want to do that. Like, <laughs> just, if, I, if it's a rip-off or whatever, I just want to come out and just be... Just be cool. <laughs> yeah, dude. He has a good time, I can tell. Well, man, I appreciate it so much for coming on. Yep. Um, we're really excited to see where things go for you and Denim James. Uh, so I'll keep everybody updated. I'm not really sure when this is going to post, but I have probably like six in front of this I'll be posting. So it no, should be in a couple of weeks. But, dude, thank you so much. And if you're listening to What the Shuck Podcast, thank you so much. Please like it, subscribe, and share. And most importantly, don't forget to live the dream and have a safe weekend. Thanks for coming on, dude. Appreciate it, man. Thank you.